Uh, Jenny has early onset dementia, um, Alzheimer's. Uh, there's a few people in this place with it. Uh, Jenny came in here um, two weeks ago for a bit of respite and after a day or two the staff uh, started to notice that Jenny had took a shine to Tony. He's one of the uh, permanent residents. He's also got early onset. Um, anyway, uh, they were spotted going into each other's rooms, holding hands, kissing, that kind of thing. And, uh, and with Jenny being married, the staff were quite keen to keep them apart. Um, I mean, Tony's uh, a free agent, so you know there's no worries on that front. But, but after a few days of being watched like hawks by the staff, uh, they're still desperate to be together, so they decide to make a bid for freedom. Um, I mean, this place isn't like a prison, no, no. Um, the human rights of a uh, dementia sufferer are paramount. Um, so Jenny's just had a bath. Um, she had a little accident earlier in the day when the member of staff who's uh, dressing her is called away to an emergency. Somebody's had a serious fall down the corridor and it's all hands on deck, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, in the commotion, Tony and Jenny decide to make a break for it. Now, we're not sure if it was when the laundry was delivered or when the ambulance arrived, but somebody somewhere is Joe Abolican because that's how they got out. And there's supposed to be procedures in place to stop this kind of thing happening. And they were spotted skipping down the road, holding hands. Uh, Tony's fully dressed, uh, Jenny's in her tights and her pants with uh, just a cordy covering just her top half. And, uh, well, Jenny's a very well-endowed woman, so um, you can imagine the sight. Uh, the man who owns the news agent, agents uh, alerted the police when he saw them running down the high street. and. Uh, and he must have got a good look because he gave a, a very detailed description. <laughs> they only got as far as the cemetery, the cemetery just inside the first gate before they decided to get down to it. I know, honestly. Uh, they went at it like a couple of teenagers on top of a, a gravestone, you know, one of the old fashioned ones, the, the flat ones looks a bit like a table. And according to the vicar who was conducting the funeral ceremony a couple of plots along, the Bereaved family took quite some consoling. Uh, apparently they'd never seen such debauchery, which uh, I find hard to believe because uh, they're from Baker. <laughs> like two stuck dogs wailing, one witness said in the Evening Chronicle. Oh yes, it made the papers, caused quite a stir, you know, almost trended on Twitter. I suppose it was just pure bad luck that the school bus happened to be passing at the time. The kids were all snap happy, you know, they thought it was hilarious. Well, I suppose you would in their situation, but uh, not when it's your wife. Um, I don't know, I mentioned that, yeah. Jenny's my wife. Um, well, the first I knew about it was uh, when the police called, uh, Jenny wears a bracelet, you know, one of those uh, plasticky things they give you in hospitals with all your details on in case of such eventualities. Uh, oh yes, I'm a planner. Um, didn't plan for this, mind. Uh, you need to come down to the station, sir. Your wife's been caught copulating alfresco. You know, I thought alfresco only referred to eating out. And, and after I, I, I get over the initial shock, I think, well, we've been married for 20 years and we've never done it alfresco. Jenny's always been quite reserved about that type of thing, you know? until the dementia, um, they call it disinhibition. Um, it affects some people like that. Uh, they lose all sense of propriety, uh, doctor's words, not mine. Um, one woman in the support group, her husband groped the bride at a family wedding and it was his future daughter-in-law. <laughs> we didn't have kids. Uh, Jenny's quite a bit older than me. Uh, we met at work office romance, both worked at the ministry, and uh, and I was shocked when she was diagnosed. Um, I didn't think you could get dementia in your 50s. I, I thought it was an, an old person's disease. Apparently not. Jenny's is early onset. Uh, it's, a, it's amazing, the stuff you learn. Uh, CJD, you know, uh, mad cow's disease? That's a form of dementia. I didn't know that. I do now. I'm an expert in the subject. Uh, I mean, if they did a degree in dementia, 
I would pass it with flying colours. I know more than the medical staff. Mind you, that's not hard. Uh, our GP was worse than useless. Um, luckily, we were sent to see a locum, a uh, foreign lass, um, Polish, I think, and her, her dad had dementia, and that's how she knew what the signs were. I mean, if we hadn't met her, I'd dread to think where would be now. It was our 20th wedding anniversary two weeks ago. Um, that's why Jenny was in respite. It got the better of us, you know. I couldn't cope, I just couldn't bear the thought of. Um, you know, usually I cope quite well. You know, people are always telling us that, you know, I, I, I cope well, but I can see the pity, you know, when they're talking to us. I think the most difficult thing is the lack of intimacy. Um, I've been told, um, I was told by the social worker that I'm not allowed to make love to my wife anymore. Apparently, uh, with the dementia, that means she can't give consent, so technically it would be rape. I mean, it's not like she doesn't want to, you know? I would never force her, you know, that would be terrible. But Jenny's free to initiate sex with this Tony for the whole world to see, but I can't make love to her in our own bed. I mean, how's that right? I don't even cuddle her in case... Because I still want to, you know? I'm um, still a bloke, have yearnings, and she's my wife, and I, and I still love her, despite everything. And so when the police calls, um, I, I go down to the station to pick her up, and, and the policeman's, you know, he was awkward when he was explaining the situation to us. Well, you would be, wouldn't you? And, uh, and as I approach them, um, uh, they're standing there, uh, her and Tony together, and they, they've got blankets wrapped around them, and I, I can see that they're holding hands underneath. And, uh, and the policeman says, come on, pet, it's time to go home. And um, she looks at me, and it, and it seems like she's glad to see me. And I think, thank God for that, because, you know, she looked quite happy with this Tony. And then she, she looks me straight in the eyes, and she said, um, are you the taxi driver? Are you the taxi driver? And um, the cop is confused now because he thinks I might be an imposter, but uh, but he can see that I'm felled. And, uh, he says, come on, stop messing about. This is your husband. And Jenny looks puzzled and she says, nah, you made a mistake, officer. This is my husband. And she strokes Tony's arm. And, and I can see that the cop is embarrassed for me, you know? I mean, I'm embarrassed for me. This is the first time she's mistaken me for somebody else in public, and it's in front of a policeman, and in front of my wife's lover. You know, and for a brief moment, I have this thought, and I, I wish it was over. I wish she was dead. I mean, you must think I'm a right bastard. Well, probably am. And I must be, deep down. I mean, what kind of man would wish that his wife was dead or had cancer? Not this cruel, cruel disease. And, well, I have to keep reminding myself that that's what it is, you know? A disease, it's not her. She's not deliberately trying to hurt us. And, uh, and I remember what I've read in the books, um, you know, about not contradicting them. Um, you know, because it only makes them more anxious. Just play along. As long as they're happy, that's all that counts. As long as they're happy. Um, and so I turned to her, um, you know, tears in my eyes. And I say, yes, love. I'm the taxi driver. And uh, I've come to take you and your husband home. And she smiles at me and she says, you're a good new, I can tell. Your wife's a very lucky lady. And I think, is she? Is she really? <laughs>